It is Luke Thomas. It's November 30th, 2015. This is the Monday Morning Analyst. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, on today's docket, very simple, very easy, very quick, really. Uh, we're going to talk about UFC Fight Night 79 uh, just a little bit, and um, we'll break down a fight that I really want to talk about a little bit more in detail, the Duho, Duho Choi. Pardon me. Versus Sam Cecilia about. We'll do that in the second part, and of course in the third part, as you know, uh, get to some of the fights that are coming up the next weekend. Um, best place to reach me, of course, is uh, on Twitter at SBN Luke Thomas. Email me at luke.thomas at sbnation.com. Podcast works in three parts: a big overview, break down some technique, look ahead at what's next. Try doing about thirty minutes. So clock ticking. Let's get right down to it. So here's what I'm going to do for part one. Here we go. I am not going to break down the entire card like I did last week without any sort of technical detail. I'm going to break down that big fight, the Choi versus Cecilia fight, in great detail in part two. So rather than doing a big overview for part one, let's talk about just a couple of quick talking points coming out of um, UFC Fight Night 79. By the way, this was the debut in South Korea. This took place at the Olympic Gymnastics Arena in Seoul. Uh, I really want to go. I'm, I've never been to South Korea, and I would very much like to go. been to Japan. I've uh, been to Hong Kong. I have never been to... Um, uh, mainland China, I don't think, and I've certainly never been to South Korea. But in any case, I uh, really want to go. Didn't get a chance. Um, in the main event, Benson Henderson taking on Jorge Masvidal and winning via split decision, 47-48, 48-47, 49-46. Um, you know, uh, I don't know. You could have scored this fight for Masvidal, in my opinion, but that's neither here nor there. I, the one thing that always sort of like really interests me is... What is it about Ben Henderson's fighting style? I think a record five split decision main event victories, if I'm not mistaken. Um, that when it, when it goes close to the wire, he always seems to get the nod. Uh, very bizarre. I, I, I would really like, there must, at this point, I mean, five fights is a small sample size, but yet when you think about it, that's, you know, 25 rounds, where over the course of those, basically more judges than didn't thought that was his fight and even 25 is not a huge sample size of course but it, it's very curious it's a very curious thing um, I don't quite have an explanation for it I don't know if it's the fact that he's a little more active I don't know if it's the fact or he seems to be more active I, I, I don't know but it, it, it is worth exploration to try and figure out there's something about the way Ben Henderson competes that make judges kind of lean his direction a little bit when maybe they shouldn't. But in either case, um, if you had Henderson, I don't think it's very much of an argument to say that's wrong. Um, it was a close fight. Masvidal still waiting back a little bit too much for my taste, which has plagued his career uh, in the big fights. And really, what's going to happen next? Is Henderson going to sign with Bellator? I don't think so. You know, I think that certainly UFC will have a matching clause. Um, Henderson would be a good get for Bellator. I think they'll try and pony up for him. But... Um, Henderson's one of these guys where, between the UFC's ability to match whatever Bellator offers and, um, you know, how good he is for that roster at UFC in two weight classes, I just don't see them letting him go unless, you know, Bellator pays some exorbitant price for him. Uh, Don Hyung Kim defeated Dominic Waters. That is of no surprise. 3-11 to of the first round. Alberto Mina defeated Yoshihiro Akiyama. Again, another, another decision where you could be like, eh. But, um... Uh, you know, it shouldn't even be that close with Akiyama. I mean, Akiyama's 40. He's lost a billion fights in a row. Um, it's probably time for him to hang it up if he's not, if he hasn't already decided to. We'll get to do Ho, Ho Choi versus Sam Cecilia in the second part. Just a, quick, a couple of quick notes here. Donkey Yang defeating Jay Collier uh, at 150 of the second round. Mike De La Torre not looking nearly as good as I thought he was going to against Uchul Nam. Winning via split decision. Taehyung Bang defeating Leo Kuntz, which kind of shocked me. Uh, another split decision. Uh, Seo He Ham, I call our search engine optimization He Ham, uh, or Ham, defeated Courtney Casey. A very, very tough fight. Uh, Ham can take a shot, man. Taking that head kick in the first round and then digging her way out. Bit of a bummer for Courtney Casey because I think her two fights in the octagon, if I'm not mistaken, are this one against Ham, who's a destroyer, and then against uh, Joanne Calderwood. So she really has been thrown to the wolves here um, early in her career. She's very, very tough. I had picked her to win. Um, you know, she couldn't dig it out late. She kind of fades a little bit as fights go on, I've noticed. That's something she probably has to work on. But she's got a lot of skill. She's got a lot of tenacity, great punching power, great great array of strikes. Um, I, I, it'd be a shame for the UFC to, to quit on her. Now, she's a straw weight. She's got a deeper division. She has some other choices that, for her to explore. But um, tough road for her. My guy, uh, to an extent that I have one, Freddy Serrano defeating Yao Zhu... Uh, I cannot pronounce this donk's name. Um, Zhi Kui. 
uh, at 44 the first uh, first round. The guy, man, there was two things he did. One, he posted on his arm, which dislocated it, which why would you ever post on your arm? It's just a terrible idea. And number two, um, you know, he brought his feet together in footwork all the time. When you bring your feet together, that's when you can be off balanced. You never want to have your feet together. You'll never see boxers put their feet together. If they step one, then they follow. If they step one, then they follow. If they step, then they follow. If they step, then they follow. If they had diagonal, then they follow. He was bringing his feet together all the time. Um, just really bad footwork on his part. Uh, and then, of course, uh, Marco Beltran defeating um, Ning Guangzhou via split decision. And then Dominic Steele getting that Rampage Arona style slam on the other Dong Hyun Kim at 27 seconds of the third round. A uh, fighter of the card would certainly be uh, Du Ho Choi, in my opinion, which we'll get to in the second part. So, again, there was no real big overview. Uh, the Korean crowd was great. The fights were uh, moving along great. Uh, should be noted, the fight pass pacing, phenomenal. I mean, it couldn't ask for more. That's how it's supposed to feel, you know. Um, I, I mean, obviously, it could have gone a little bit longer, and I wouldn't uh, uh, complain too much. But um, so, and I also thought, by the way, John Gooden, Kenny Florian were a great combination together. I really enjoyed them. Um, both guys are very talented. It had a nice little feel to it. So I enjoyed. I enjoyed a lot of it. I thought it was really, really good. Um, you know, and and it just goes to show you, there's lots of good Korean prospects in a number of different weight classes. You know, not as many as we would like necessarily, but hey, you know, for a small country, uh, uh, it's definitely got a strong representation in martial arts. And now we can see at the highest level of mixed martial arts as well, they got some guys that can fill out the roster and um, good for them. It's been a long time coming that they could go to South Korea. I guess it was some issues, um, you know, um, Marshall Zelaznik told me it was just about getting the, going to Brazil enabled them to build up their core competencies to be able to broadcast from a lot of facilities that were not particularly modern. They had to up their game to be able to do that. And in doing that, it enabled them to then go to facilities that have similar problems across the world at scale. Um, and so that's what the holdup was in Korea because they have great TV deals there. Obviously, they have a lot of guys in different weight classes that they can put on the cards and they got a lot of big names um, or at least a lot of decent names anyway. So there we go. That was the event there. Let's take a closer look in the second part here at Du Ho Jesus Christ, Du Ho Choi versus Sam Cecilia. Let's talk about some things that happened there. I thought Choi looked phenomenal. I thought Cecilia had a couple of moments there, um, and I really think there's a couple of things that you know Choi needs to work on if he's going to fight someone really, really good as he moves up the, the ranks um, um, there at featherweight. But uh, a lot to like about him as well. So that was part one. Let's talk about part two. Let's break down Choi versus Cecilia. Okay, what's up, everybody? Luke Thomas here uh, for the Monday Morning Analyst. So this is going to be part two. Now, you know, usually I go through all of the different fights and you know give an impression about what happened in each and this, that, and the other. And and I'm not opposed to doing that, but I'm trying to mix things up a little bit and. You know, the sad part is about UFC stuff, I can't show you videos, I can't even really show you GIFs, but I can take some frame-by-frame -frame stuff. Um, and that's what I did here, and I and I chose this fight with Sam Cecilia and Duho Choi. You can see Sam Cecilia in the, uh, you know, the, the, more towards the rear of the cage, uh, and your, the back uh, of, you know, right here, you can see the back of Duho Choi is to you right now. I want to do that because Duho Choi has created a lot of buzz and a lot of momentum in a very short amount of time with very good reason, um, but, you know, there was good things both guys did, and I just thought that because, you know, Choi has this really budding career, that we could talk about him a little bit more in depth, and talk about this fight a little bit more in depth, um, and uh, and see what both guys did well, and what both guys, you know, did poorly, and, and should work on for the next time, because, you know, look, it was a short fight, it's one of these fights where you say, well, you know, Choi had a bunch of momentum coming in, he was the favored guy, and he put... Sam Cecilia out, I believe, in a minute and 33 seconds into this fight. And so you say, well, you know, it was easy work. And it was, in a sense, kind of easy work, definitely. Definitely some things, though, you need you notice about Choi in the tape, though, that um, could get him in trouble in the future. So this is what I want you to notice. This is kind of important as we start here on this first slide. Um, thing, this is what kind of what I want to bring up here. And so we'll zoom in just a little bit as well here. So, so check this out. So... Sam Cecilia is basically going to do two things through the course of this fight. You're going to see right here where my cursor is, he's going to hand trap. 
He's going to try and smack the hand of Duho Choi to then launch either a kick or a punch or something behind it. That's one thing he's going to do. The other thing he's going to do, and we'll get to that in subsequent slides, is he's going to crouch and then kind of leap. When he crouches, he'll typically leap into a left hook. But I want to start where the fight starts. Basically, you look at the clock down here, 449. And what you see is that he's trying to hand trap the lead left hand of Du Ho Choi. Okay. So this is going to have not a whole lot of success. One key thing to me that was really interesting about Sam Cecilia is there was basically no jab. Guys would stick their hands out to range find. And to, you know, Cecilia's credit... Choi doesn't do a lot of jabbing either. He does a little bit more pawing with the lead hand to find a jab. But I just want to show you here, 449, this is the first real exchange. So what happens? And again, we'll zoom in a little bit here. He tries to trap that hand, the lead left hand, and then comes around for an outside kick, Sam Cecilia does, on the, on, with his own left leg. But you see what happens here when he goes to the kick. He was trying to block and parry the left hand. But Choi loves to initiate strikes from the right side and then slam home the left hook. Choi's left hook is nasty. It is super nasty for a couple of reasons. Number one, it's very powerful. You'll see, look at the way that Hoy's chips, uh, chips, Hoy's hips, Jesus Christ, Choi's hips are facing. They're facing one direction right now. When he slams home, when he brings that all the way around, what you're going to see is his hips are going to be basically facing the opposite side. So for one thing, he brings a tremendous amount of power behind it. Number two, it's in quick succession. When the right lands, the left lands, I mean, just a second or two afterwards. So we saw 449. Cecilia trying to parry, and then he kind of goes to the opposite side. A lot of time, guys will parry. You saw Frank Mir against Antonio Silva. He might parry the same side and then come over the top. That's how he knocked him out. He doesn't change sides. Some guys might parry and then slam home a different side punch. You'll, you'll see. So you'll, you know, if you block with the left, throw with the right, that, that kind of thing. We'll see what happens here. But you, you see, he, he goes to the kick. Doesn't really go too well for him. Choi lands the right, and then boom. You see right here again. Slams home that left hook. Okay? Big problem. It's a big problem for him. All right, 448. So let's keep going. I'm going to pull some of these out. I'm going to draw on them in just a second. So now Cecilia goes back. He says, okay, I'm still going to parry that left hand. You see that? I'm still going to parry that with my right, but now I'm going to slam home my own left. So here we go. And he does. And he tries to throw it here. So he's parrying on one side and then trying to throw with the other. Okay, that's what's trying to happen here. But he runs into a bit of a complication. So remember the first time he parried? Through the, le the left leg kick. Now he parries and throws the left hand. Doesn't quite work. Because what happens? When he tries to bring home his own right hand, Choi ducks it. When he ducks it, he slams on his own right hand. Now watch Choi's hips when he drives home this left hook. Look at his hips now. They're basically facing directly away. They're facing kind of where Bruce Buffer and everyone here in the corner is sitting. That's where his hips are facing, right? Watch what happens when he drives home the left. Boom! Look at that. Look how his hips are now facing completely at a 90 degree angle. And that left hand, you can see it's not right on the chin. It's not right on the jaw. It's a little bit behind the head. Now, it's not, you know, it's an accidental shot. It happens in transition. I just wanted to point that out. Look at how nasty that is. Wow. Pretty sick. So this clearly hurts. Real badly, this hurts Sam Cecilia. And we're only 19 seconds into the fight. So Sam Cecilia tries to brace himself. Two hands on the mat here because he's, he's rocked, no doubt about it, right? And you see Choi looking dead at him, ready to just unload. So eventually he gets him to the ground because, you know, Sam Cecilia is, is struggling a little bit. Now this is kind of interesting to me too. Sam Cecilia does a lot of good here, and uh, I'd like to pull this out if I can for just a second. I'm not sure which frame this is. This is frame 10. All right, so let's do this for a second. Let's pull out frame 10, and I apologize for the ghetto nonsense here. Okay, so let's drive down just a little bit. Let's scoot out. Here we go. Okay, this is kind of what I want to look at a little bit here. Just for a little bit of a second. All right, here's one thing that I think Cecilia is just doing super, super well. And I'm going to draw with some yellow here. Look at this for a second. Now, 
one thing. Number one, his back is not on the mat. Look at the space here between if he was laying flat. All of this is negative space. So for one thing, Cecilia, while rocked, is still trying to get out there and he's trying to hustle. You know, he's trying to get out there and he's trying to make something happen. He's keeping good posture. Now, this is a scramble, so, you know, you can't hold here for very long. Another thing is his knees are in tight. Look at both knees are in tight. Kind of important here, which I'll explain why in just a second. Now, Choi's doing kind of the right thing, but he's really kind of not. I mean, I guess it depends on what you want to do. If this were something where I think it was Jacques Array, Jacques Array would drop his hips down, block the knees from coming inside, right? He would, he would just take away all that space and then kind of unload from there. I don't know that Choi feels that comfortable in the Jacques Array sense of driving his hips down, but you can, all you have to do is just sit your hips down and you've got mount, right? I mean, it's, it's, it's there for the taking. But that's not exactly what he does. So let's quickly go back to the photo here. I'm going to blow this up. All right, so what, is, what does Cecilia do? This is what he does. This is nice. This is very nice. He begins to create a scramble. He posts on that left elbow, driving off of his left foot. Why? Because he's forcing Choi to deal with... So in other words, if you do that, if you drive off this left foot, if you plant here, you're turning your weight to the left. That's going to force Choi's weight down a little bit, but not driving his hips down. Look where his weight is. He's posted on his hand. His weight is going forward. It's going forward, and I think he even got kicked here a little bit, not like just bumped a little bit with the knee. But you see the weight is past his, like if all he has to do is just drive, if you're Choi, you just got to sit here, just drive your hips down. And you see Choi pulling on the back of that arm, trying to create a lane just to drop your hips down. Bring your knee to the mat and sit, just sit. But he doesn't, and as a consequence, C Cecilia is able to do this. Look at that. You see that real closely? Let's zoom in a little bit here. The left knee is inside now. Cecilia was able to get the left knee. So he bucks one way just to create enough space, moves the weight of Choi forward above him, move your weight over you to create a lane just for you to get that knee inside. And it's great because you have an underhook and your knee inside on the same side. That's a good, good option to have. And you can see, look, look at the live toes of Cecilia on the other side. So what happens? He butterfly sweeps them, basically. Not, it's not a technical butterfly sweep, but he basically just creates enough space to get him again. Look at Choi. Planted on the left hand. Now look, at, now look at all this space. All of Choi's weight is going one way. He's having to stop it by going this way. This is not going to... I mean, you can't just stop here. You have to keep going. But the point being is he's created an avenue. He's created an opening. He's created a lane to then scramble as he turns back to his base. You see that? Now, if Choi really wanted to and was really into it, he could, sorry, what's happening here? Oops, let's go back. If he really wanted to, he could go back and he could still, even now, drive his hips in. But again, it just does not seem like this was a position he was necessarily that comfortable with. So it kind of all started, it kind of all started a little bit here with Cecilia doing this. Let's open another one here. Let's open like, let's say 12. You see him? He's got, he's got the underhook and he's got the leg inside. This is great. This is great. And live toes, toes on the mat. Let me go back and look at 11 here very quickly just to see what it looked like. Yeah, you see that underhook? He's going to drive his weight. He's going to drive Choi this way. Choi's weight, all he has to do is drive his hips down, is take that knee to the mat, close that space off, and he doesn't. He just decides to kind of, I don't know exactly what he's thinking here, because even this knee is not exactly touching. There's space there. It's a little bit of a bizarre choice here from, from our friend uh, Duho Choi, but in any case, it won't, it won't matter too much. Uh, let's, no, we're not going to save these changes. Okay, so let's quickly go back here to iPhoto. Okay. So now we have Sam uh, getting back to his base. Let's keep this train rolling. You see him stand up here. Everything's looking good. Choi's trying to get a front headlock. 
and they separate. Okay, so remember before I was telling you about the hand trapping, the hand um, parrying he was doing. Now what you see is the lean that I was talking about. Look at this lean. Let's close that off for just a second. Look at this lean. This is Look how upright his posture is. Look how bent over he is. Watch what happens here. So you see it again. Look at him leaning. He's and, and you say, well, he's fainting for the takedown, but he never really goes for the takedown, at least not from this outside shot position. What he's doing is he's loading himself like a spring. Look at how far back his leg is. It's, like, it's almost like a wrestling shot, but if you're not shooting, you know, you're not really making him have to answer for it. So here we see him do something interesting. Remember before how Cecilia was trying to parry this hand and then launch an attack on that side? Now look, he's reaching for the right hand. Why? Well, he's saying to himself, okay, everything is starting with that right hand. That right hand from Choi is devastating. If I can stop that, then maybe I can get something going here. So he actually reaches across, like way, way outside to stop that, and then it's presumably to throw another strike behind it. So what happens? He misses. Again, look at the left hand of Choi. Look at him getting his head off the center line. He has this joker, the left hand, ready, I mean, cocked and ready to unload on him. Let's see what happens. He actually decides not to go over the top. He drives inside and throws an uppercut. And again, I want to point you at, his, at Choi's hips. Everything rotates over. Everything rotates over. I mean, this is how you drive your power into something. All right, so they separate again. We're at 416 of the very first round. What's Cecilia doing again? Lowering his level. Lowering his level. Hand trapping, parrying, lowering his, lowering his level. There's no jabs. There's no jabs. So he leaps in to that left hook. So we go back. Look at that. Driving down, leaping in. This is how he wants to close the distance. Now, what's Choi doing? It looks like Choi is measuring with his left hand. They both kind of stalemate here a little bit. The left hand sneaks through for Choi, and the right and the left, excuse me, for Cecilia has a little bit of luck, but it mostly misses as well. So then they clinch. This is a fun little uh, exchange here, and I'm going to pull this out in just a second too. So what's Sam Cecilia doing? Watch how this 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 is super interesting. You can't quite see it right now. Cecilia has an underhook on the right side. He has an overhook on the left side. So what's he going to do? He's going to try and throw him to the left side. I like that choice. I like that choice because you have the underhook. You can pick up. You can drive them up. And with the other hand is if even if they have an overhook, excuse me, even if they have an underhook, you can pinch your overhook to your body and then throw them that way. But to do that, here's the problem with this, for me, the problem with this um, takedown. Let's Let's... Pull this out for a second. This is frame 24. So let's do this. Let's pull up paintbrush. Let's f open. I believe I deleted 24. So I believe that should be 25, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, here we go. So this is a problem for me. And the reason why is because, you know, for one of these takedowns, you can do it like this. But for me, his feet. Oh, excuse me, let me do this one more time. Let's do this. Yes. His feet are really far apart. This, it, it really widens your base, and it just creates too much space in between. I, I don't really like it that way. you got to be a little bit closer. Because watch what Choi does here to just answer for the whole thing. Look at how close their, their, their lead feet are together, right? They're, I mean, this is about, like, you know, half a foot apart. It's nothing. Like, look at the distance here. Now watch what Choi does to counter this. Look at that foot now. He takes a step back. You see that? He's, Cecilia's still hooked. He's still trying to drive things over. Choi's not having any of it. Choi takes a big step back. Now watch what happens. This is kind of interesting. He tries to throw him over the top. This is, this is excellent. But you'll notice something very, very uh, smart here in the part of Cecilia. He surrenders double underhooks here. Why? So he can free his right elbow. He knows he lost this battle. But I've mentioned this on this chat board, this, uh, this podcast before. Watch what happens here. 
He gets his elbow down, he gets his knee down, he gets his foot down, and remember what I always told you when a takedown happens. You always want to have your hips square to the mat. Look at Cecilia's hips. They are facing the mat. Yeah, it's a scramble, and it's not so great. Choi's got an underhook, and he's got a whizzer, and they're all kind of, there's a, there's a leg entanglement. It's not a great position, but he's not on his side, he's not on his back, he's got his one leg, knee, elbow, and he's posted off of his head. This is an opportunity to scramble. He gave himself an opportunity to scramble. All the credit to Sam Cecilia there after being countered. So we keep going. Look again, 353. What's Cecilia doing? Lowering his level. Why? So he can power into it. 351. Now this is kind of interesting. Choi decides that he's going to just leap into Sam Cecilia. And you can see Cecilia grimacing here, but if you go back and watch, the shot doesn't land too clean. What's about to happen is the best exchange for me for Cecilia in the whole fight. So you think, oh, wow, look at Cecilia. He's trying to drive an uppercut, but man, he's getting measured here with the left hand of Choi. Not exactly. Cecilia actually gets there first and hits Choi pretty hard with that left hand, you see. Follows it up with another left. And you see Choi extending himself with that right like he likes to do, but he misses. That's a bit that he he, he kind of got a little too greedy with it, and he misses. And you see that right hand of, of Cecilia cocked back there. Bang. Lands hard on the punch. And Cecilia, remember, you know, he's, he's putting a lot into these punches. I mean, you can say whatever you want about his technique, but he doesn't hit softly. And then comes back with another left. And you can see the hair of Choi you know, all rocked. So now we're at distance again. Okay, what happens? Looks like mostly upright posture, mostly upright posture. You can see the front foot here of Choi. He's trying to step forward. Now, look at Cecilia getting in that low stance. Weight coming this way, coming forward, right? Watch what happens. Look how low he is. Look at that. Look how low he is. And here's the other key point. I'm going to pull this out. What slide is this? 30, this should be 39 then in, in paintbrush. Let's pull up slide 39. Okay, let's pull up 39. Okay, look at how low Cecilia is. That's a little too far here. You're going to see something kind of interesting here. If I took a straight line and I just drew it, this is relatively straight. I mean, I know it's a little crooked, but you see what I'm talking about. The toes of each guy are on that line. You see that? There's a straight line in the sand. But there's a couple of key differences here, which this, I just want to point this out. Look at the line here. Look where they're both got their front lead toes on it. Now, when we go back to photo, look whose posture is upright. Look who's crouched down. Moreover, look whose weight is going forward. Look whose weight is a little bit, I mean, his both guys' weights are going forward, but look who's a little more balanced. And here's the key component to the whole thing. Watch what happens next. We're at 334. 334, look at this. Cecilia tries to leap into a left hook, but he gets met with the right hand of Choi. And we've been going over this and over this and over this. After Choi throws the right, what does he like to throw immediately after in super quick, powerful, ridiculous hand speed succession? The left hook. Bang. There it is. Now you'll notice it doesn't quite land properly, but it lands enough to do the damage. This sets up the beginning of the end. He falls. Choi gets on top. Referee pulls him off, and that's it. Now let's look at that from a couple of different angles here that they showed in the replay. Here it is again. Look at Cecilia. Now they're not quite on the same line yet, but you can see, look at the front left foot of Cecilia, it's coming down. Choi knows, look how close they are, they can almost touch each other. Choi knows that when he leaps, he doesn't really leap with the right hand. He'd already done this several times. He leaps with the left. Watch. Boom. Just meets him coming in. The hand, look how far out the hand is of Cecilia. It's way out there. He was trying, he, he was thinking, my left is going to get there faster than his right. And that's a decent thought, I suppose, except you're lowering your level, you're springing up to him, you're kind of off balance because you're not like dizzy in that sense, but you're putting all your weight one way where you can't really retract, you, you're not mobile, you have to land there or you're in big trouble. Choi's hand speed is nuts. It's really, 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 really good. 
So he lands the right before the left can ever find a home, even though Cecilia is driving into it. And there's that left hand right behind it. Go back and look at the hips. Look at Choi's hips. Facing basically the ring walk, right? The, the ring walk behind the monster energy sign. Facing this way. Watch what happens when you turn. Bink, look at that. Look at his hips turn. All that power coming behind it. Let's look at it one more angle. Okay, you see here? They're still not quite there yet. They're still a little too far. I mean, they're kicking range, but they're not quite punching range yet. Look at that. Steps down. Choi doesn't move a muscle. I mean, he's loose, but he's ready. Bink catches him coming in. Clean as a whistle, man. And again, look at his hips. They're facing this direction. And what's kind of interesting was, I had thought at this moment when I first saw it, wow, Choi did a really good job of sliding in the pocket. And he does, as I mentioned, do a really good job of getting his hips turned over for that left hook for winging it around the corner. But actually what happens is the right hook is so powerful, excuse me, the right over the top here from Choi is so powerful, it actually stops Cecilia in motion, which makes it look like Choi is shifting in the pocket when really he's just coming around the bend. Bang. There it is. And I think that is it for the whole slide. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. This is uh, just a wonderful example of, you know, listen, here's my point about Choi. Choi has absurd power, good mechanics, a dangerous, dangerous left hook, uh, fast hand speed, and great pocket presence. He does take some risks, though. A crisp striker who's got good defense is going to note those things. For Sam Cecilia, on the other hand, he's got big power, and he can counter well against guys who get themselves out of position. But for a guy who maintains great position, like Choi, it was a bit of an uphill climb. You saw no jab. You saw the hand parrying, and you saw the, the, the crouching and the leaping. But even the crouching and the leaping, it didn't come with... <laughs> there's some Facebook notification. It didn't come with the right kind of uh, variance behind it. And once you leap like that, that you can't adjust. You're, you're stuck into that motion once you come out uh, you know, of the cannon, if, if, in a manner of speaking. And Choi knew that. Choi was able to beat him with speed, beat him with position, and then again had that dangerous over-the-top right, shifting left hook, and the hips were all behind it. Okay, and uh, part three here. We usually talk about what's coming up next. One quick note, or one last note, I should say, about Choi versus Cecilia. I want to make a quick point about um, you know the ending sequence. You notice it wasn't the first time back at 416 of the first round. You saw him crouch and then leap with that left hook into the front. Um, and didn't have a lot of success then either. But I, I kind of want to make one more point about that. They were at such close range. There was a couple things that were confusing for me about that. Number one, if you just think about it mechanically, if you're crouched down and you have to leap up and then drive and then open your shoulder and then come around with the left hook, you know, it's just a big motion. It's a really big motion. It's a lot you have to do all at once to get from where you want to go to where you want to be. That's that's doing a lot. Changing levels, changing distance, covering distance, and then throwing that punch. By also, you're not chambering a straight punch. You know, you're coming this way. You're coming that. You're opening the shoulder the way he was doing it. That's a lot of movement, isn't it? Right. It's a lot easier if you're just coming down the pike, like Choi was. So Choi had to cover less distance. He had to cover less movement. He had to do less to get from where he wanted to go to where he wanted to be. Cecilia had to do a bunch. Remember, there's no jab, so he has to just leap into things. The other thing that I thought was weird, and I guess I didn't mention on the video, remember how I told you their toes were on the same line if you drew a line between them? You know, why was he leaping? If you're that close, you shouldn't have to leap into something. You know, I guess you can do it if you want to. If Maybe it works in sparring. I don't know exactly, but it's a curious choice when you're that close to be jumping into something versus sort of finding angles and sneaking your way in. And that's harder to do, and it requires a little more, you know, uh, ability in that space. But nevertheless, I, I would understand it if they were a little bit further away, but they were so close. So for me, it's like mechanically how much more you have to do versus the chamber punch. And then also just the choice of leaping at all when they're that close. Okay, but let's move on. Part three, what's coming up next? The big UFC stuff doesn't start this week. It doesn't start until the 10th of December, which is the Van Zant versus Nama Yunus card on the 10th. That's going to be phenomenal. But upcoming first, look, not the greatest card, not the biggest card, but something to pay attention to. Josh Thompson makes his Bellator debut. Bellator 147, Thompson versus uh, Vijas Vijaseca. Or Vila Seca, depending on how you want to pronounce it. Uh, I was always taught the two L's in Spanish become a Y, the Y becomes a J sound. So 
Vijaseca. But anyway, this will be the San Jose State University Event Center. So we're going back to San Jose, but not, of course, at the HP Pavilion. Um, and Thompson will be facing Pablo uh, Vijaseca. Georgia Karakani and taking on Daniel Weichel. That is a very good fight. That's a good fight by any measurement. Um, Weichel beating Pit Pitbull until that, you know, monster. I think it was a was it a left hook or a right hook that just sat him down at the Kimbo fight versus uh, Shamrock. Um, Karakani and bu bulldozing, blitzing through uh, Bubba, Bubba Jenkins. So this is two really good guys. Weichel's very good. So is Karakani and very experienced. I like both at this weight class. There's a lot to like. Um, between these two. And then Patricky Freire taking on Derek Anderson. That's okay. It's not great. Uh, Virgil Zwicker fighting uh, Brian Rogers should be good for um, some, you know, fisticuffs in terms of just, you know, two guys bludgeoning each other. I'm not sure what to expect beyond that. But nevertheless, um, those two fights at the top Thompson making his Bellator debut, and then Karakani taking on Vaishal. Those are the ones that you're going to be watching for coming up on Friday, December 4th, I believe. Uh, yes, December 4th. And that'll be, of course, at 9 p.m. on Spike TV. So check, uh, um, look out for that. And by the way, uh, uh, Tomas Dion, who is um, the teammate over at uh, AKA, is also on this car, taking on Eric Sanchez. So that should be kind of interesting on the prelims. Um, so there you go. That's what's coming up next. Thank you so much for watching. If I missed anything, if there's anything you want to add or whatever the case may be, I'm sure I missed something. Um, please send me a note at uh, luke.thomas at sbnation.com. You can, um, G or you can um, uh, follow me on Twitter as well. Uh, at SBN Luke Thomas. Thank you so much for watching. Really appreciate it. Until next time, enjoy the fights.